A recent Xbox video gives us a behind the scenes look of the team setup and approach at E3. But what it does a lot more of is expose the reasons the showcase was so troubled. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, do me a huge favor before we get too deep into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because guess what? Y'all know the deal. I ain't too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Recent video dropped by Xbox, right? Kind of flew under the radar, but it, it, it got some hits on YouTube, like 40,000 people watched it. And what the video was, was a behind the scenes look at their setup at E3 2019. <laughs> One of their most polarizing and controversial E3 showings, maybe in the history of Xbox. You know what I'm saying? Um, people may say, MM2K, come on, man. That that E3 2013 was, was, was horrible. Actually, the E3 itself wasn't bad. What you did have is you had a lot of outside forces that had negative energy towards the E3, but people that were Xbox fans, they 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 liked it. The E3 was actually good. And I want to credit my homie Dirk Griggity for pointing that out in a few videos. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us have short-term memory, and what we did is we fused the TV showing that they had earlier in the summer or earlier that year and confused that with the E3. The E3 was actually good. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, this, in a lot of minds, is the most polarizing E3. So, despite all that, Microsoft thought it was important to release a video behind the scenes, like it was something good. Kind of kind of like in the light of Corey Barog and Sony and company releasing that um, God of War documentary, right? <laughs> right, yeah, okay, but let, let's get into it. All right, so my analysis of this video and why, I'm gonna do it like this. I wanna show you what I think they were trying to do, but show you what they actually did and give you my analysis along the way, all right? So the video itself, all right, I think what they were trying to do is they were attempting, and I'm gonna pull it up on the video here if you're watching the video. They were attempting to recapture fan sentiment or that's what they wanted to give the, the feel of releasing this video again of like the most controversial and polarizing E3 in Xbox history. You know what I'm saying? For, for at least its demographic, I don't get the point. You know what I'm saying? I was very confused watching this thing and trying to understand its purpose. With that said, one thing that it, the first thing that it reveals to your boy is that X, Xbox actively seeks these coffee shop crowd type cats. You know what I'm saying? Like when you watch the video, even that head of security just screams, do you want to mocha, mocha latte with that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this dude is the head of security and it seemed like that he couldn't punch himself out of a wet paper bag, you know? But again, Xbox, does its best to focus on diversity as it relates to shapes and colors and, and, and aesthetics. I don't think that they go outside of this, again, I hate to sound like a broken record coffee shop mentality and try to find people with edge to them. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'll get into that more in the video, right? Um, it's, it was just uninspiring altogether. I mean, it tried to hit on points of emotion, but it just didn't, you know what I'm saying? It was, it, it was kind of pointless. Like right now, what you're watching is a point in the video where Phil tries to be self-deprecating. And he's like, yeah, this is the part where they're gonna come out and they're gonna boo me. You know what I'm saying? Like there goes the dude right there, he's a hit of security. He's, he's a hit of security? I mean, and listen to the video, it gets even worse when you hear him, you know what I mean? That's it. There is no point of being self-deprecating. I guess they were trying to hit on all these different emotions and it, it, and it fell flat because you're trying to be self-deprecating at a time where people have hardcore and, and pinpoint um, issues with your strategy. There's nothing to laugh at, man. You sitting there trying to be like, laugh it off as some joke. Just, you're basically saying, I know what you're saying. I just basically don't care, which is gonna polarize your base even more. But um, also with it being uninspiring was the flat attempts to be edgier, okay? They had segments where they had, um, I forgot the lady's name that's head of uh, 
like um, Xbox external relationships. I think she's kind of like taking over what Shannon Loftus did or they, they, they fused it into something else. I don't know. But she was on stage and she presented the Game Pass stuff, okay? So they had parts with her where she was showing like her nerves and stuff like that going on stage. Um, and then they also showed the the um, the lady that's part of, uh, there she goes right there. She's part of um, uh, the Bleeding Edge studio uh, Ninja Theory, creative director, Ronnie Tucker, okay? And there's a point in the video towards the end where she's like, oh, Snapple, but she doesn't say Snapple. She says a curse word. And it, 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 it feels so out of place and feels so silly. And it makes you think, is this their attempt to try to be edgier? Like this, really? On the hills and you dropping that Gears um, trailer and you not saying anything, you just dropped it and let it be? Is this your attempt to further show that you're, you're you're embracing your edge of your side? Like, no, it's not. No, that's not enough. And that's why when people say MM2K, these videos, you got to stop. You're doing nothing but whining. No, if you give Microsoft or Xbox in particular an inch, they'll take a mile. Them dropping that video, then, 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 then attempting something like this. They have this coffee shop kumbaya side that you got to continuously hammer them on or they're gonna go back to their norms, to their safety spot. And they gotta get out of that safety spot in order to succeed with their demographic, okay? With their entire demographic successfully. So again, that part of it just fell flat as well. Um, and then you had another part towards the end of the video where um, I think her name is April McKee. She is the executive producer of, I guess, all of Xbox's uh, E3 presentations. And they're celebrating popping champagne and everybody looks happy. Sarah Bond, there she goes, head of Xbox partnerships. Um, the, the April McKee, what, what, if these are the people behind these E3s, as of late, under the new regime's helm, there needs to be a change of the guard. In no way, shape, or form should any of this look or be considered a success. Just being there, just for the fact of being there, for throwing away money, and having a few Phil stands. Oh, Phil, I got to touch the, the corner of your shirt. That's, that's, that's not doing it for the crowd. The crowd needs to show your dedication to content, a particular type of content, along with the other stuff that you want to do. And you didn't do it. You fell flat. So, at the end of all that, your boy wonders, what was the point of all this? To show that behind Xbox and their presentations and all their efforts, there's real life people with emotions. So people like MM2K, you need to leave them alone. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. Watch the video for yourself. You'll see what I mean. If that was their point, who cares? Nowhere do they address or negate any of the big questions or concerns with this video. You know what I'm saying, that people have. Where's the content? Where's the cure for the hardcore besides the people that praise everything that Phil says out of his mouth? You know what I'm saying? They, they don't do that. And again, this is why I say to keep the foot on their neck thing. This is why I'm gonna keep going. You know what I'm saying? Why I'm gonna keep going. They continue with this type of stuff in their messaging, waste 13 minutes on it despite the demographic you know what I'm saying? The demands from the demographic looking for them to pivot back hard to recapture their mind share. Microsoft just keeps trucking along. If this failed strategy reminds me of a personal storm, I'll be real quick. I'm gonna call this person Anna. You know, in my tenure, my 20 plus year tenure working for a Fortune 500 company, I do analytics. That's part of the one of the hats that I, that I wore. You know what I'm saying? Um, there was somebody named Anna. We're gonna call her Anna. Anna was very bright, but she was very spastic, okay? And Anna, just whenever you tried to show her something, before she mastered what you were trying to show her, she already had bright ideas to change, something that she did not understand or did not take the time to understand. So when it comes to analytics, data is key. And she would be sitting there changing data sets and important information for this Fortune 500 company on the fly without understanding what she was changing. Therefore, she came up with junk analytics for over a year, messed up the department in major ways. Of course, your boy had to come with his team, fix things and we got things back on track, right? Because we had to give the analytic job to her 
and then she messed it up again and we had to come back and, and, and revitalize everything Anna didn't see success until she took her spastic nature elsewhere and she took it to a team that was more suited for you just to be changing stuff on the fly whether you understood it or not right and she's successful and the department was successful more successful upon her departure and I think we're at that point here the reason why I bring that up is I think we're at that point here with Phil I think without a heavy pivot and a heavy pivot shown soon very soon phil has to go he has to go he's better suited as a lobbyist that thinks about how to frame gaming for a wider audience you know what i'm saying i'm 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 worried about the mystery congressmen that want to take gaming away so therefore i i i'm not going to show y'all hardcore stuff at e3 which is a hardcore event um you know lauding the adaptive controller which i have nothing against the adaptive controller but you put more focus on that than you are at the base things which is satisfying your core before you go into these nuanced things kind of like anna you know what i'm saying he doesn't focus on the things properly that a division head who has to focus on the approach that's suited for his entire base is supposed to and therefore, I'm not trying to say fire him and, and, and give him, put him on food stamps, give him an EBT car. No, I, I think Phil could do a lot of good, but he's not in the right place. The place that I think Phil is suited for is the ESA, all right? The Electronic Software Association. That's the group behind E3, and they, they're like lobbyists. They deal with Congress and all this stuff. If Phil wants to turn his E3 presentation up on its head because he's fearful of Congress or whatever, put him in a job where he deals directly with them. If he wants to do a, a, an adaptive controller um, to help all gamers, you know what I'm saying, um, play better, and he wants to put a lot of focus on that instead of focusing on a specific group, then put him in ESA. If he doesn't want to have exclusive content for the division and for the consumers that he's responsible for because he want all gamers to enjoy all content, whether they buy their product or not, then he needs to be at the ESA. So I urge you all, I know I went on for a while about this. I urge you all to watch this video because it shows a lot. It details a lot. They say nothing, you know what I'm saying? For 13 minutes, this video doesn't need to be out there. But the fact that they released it and they released it and produced it in this fashion, again, just continues to show how far Microsoft has to go to connect with its core and entirely. You're not gonna satisfy everybody, but golly, you gotta get an overwhelming majority of your core on base. You know what I'm saying? And lockstep with your initiatives or you're not going anywhere. It's as simple as that. And with that said, that's it from your boy mm 2 k Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me and come at me. It does not matter to your boy. With that being said, if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples. Dirk Griggity, Snow Bunny, Neethos. It's called Scram Punks. We air it every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know, I know, I know we're falling behind the scenes and keeping the shows pumping, but we gonna, we, we, we gonna, hey, look, just like Microsoft, we gotta improve. You know what I'm saying? It's the summertime, we had scheduling conflicts, but we're gonna get it back on track, all right? But check out hashtag Scram Punk for more information on that. Check out my brother in the broadband bullies. We out here doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord link, that Patreon link. Check out that link to that gear because it's fly. And yo, check out your boy, lastly, on the Hard Knock Digital Culture channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Most 2000. We out there rocking and shocking, baby. Hardcore content, hardcore media, which includes martial arts and anime. We're doing it like nothing else you've seen out there in these gaming streets. With that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.